Upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, rapping at my chamber door, only this. Nothing more. Distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December And each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow From my books or cease of sorrow for the lost Lenore The rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore Nameless here Forevermore, the silken sat uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating to some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. Only this, nothing more. Presently, my soul grew stronger, hesitating, then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is, I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door. That I scarce was sure I heard you here. I opened wide the door. Darkness there. Nothing more. Deep into that darkness, peering long, I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the darkness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word Lenore, merely this. Nothing more. Back into my chamber turning, all my soul within me burning. Soon again I heard a tapping louder than before. Surely said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what their ad is in this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment in this mystery explore. Tis the wind. Nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter when with many a flirt and flutter in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with maid of lord and lady perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door, perched and sat. Nothing more. The ebony bird beguiling my said fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance at war. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou art set, or sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's plutonian shore. Quote the raven. Nevermore, much I marveled this ungainly foul to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore, for we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast above the sculptured bust above his chamber door with such a name as... Nevermore, but the raven sitting only on the placid bus spoke only that one word as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered other friends have flown before. And on the morrow he will leave me as my hopes have flown before than the bird said. Nevermore, startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, doubt the said I what it utters is its only stock in store. Caught from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast, followed faster till his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore of never. Nevermore, put the raven still beguiling all my sad soul into smiling straight. I wheeled a cushion seat in front of bird and bustin' door. Then upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking. Nevermore, this I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more, I sat divining with my head at ease, reclining on the cushions of a blinding with a lamp like floating ore. But the velvet vital blinding with a lamp like floating ore, she shall press. Nevermore, then he thought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by several from whose football singled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God had lent me by these angels, he hath sent thee respite and nepenthe for the memories of Lenore. Quabble, quap this kind of penthe, and forget this lost Lenore, quote the raven. Nevermore, prophet said I think of evil, prophet still a bird or devil, whether tempter sent her, whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted on this desert land, enchanted on his home by horror, haunted, tell me truly I implore, is there bomb in Gilead, tell me, tell me I implore, quote the raven. Nevermore, prophet said I think of evil, prophet still a bird or devil, by the heaven that bends above us and the God we both adore, tell the soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aiden it shall clasp the sainted maiden whom the angels name Lenore, a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, quote the raven. 
Nevermore be that word our son imparting Bird or fiend I shrieked and starting Get thee back into the tempest In the nights of plutonium shore Leave no black plume as a token Of the lie thy soul has spoken Leave thy loneliness unbroken With the bust above my door Take thy beak from out my heart Take thy form from off my door Quote the raven Nevermore, and the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting, on the pallid bust of Pallas, just above my chamber door, and his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor, and my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted. Nevermore.